Shall we give a thunderous clap offering to the King of Glory? <laughs> Choir, you thank you very much. But I want you to get prepared because we're going to praise the Most High God later. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Before I start the message, I just want to observe all protocol as I've been taught. You know, I want to thank God for the opportunity to be in the presence of the children of God. It's a great opportunity. I don't take it for granted. I thank the Most High God for allowing me to see this day and allowing us to see each other. I want to appreciate all the ministers in the house for all that you are doing in Atlantic Zone 1. The Most High God will continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name. I want to tell you that God is taking this zone to a glorious place. You know, I thank God since I've been here, all I can see and feel is just unity. And there is power in unity. And unity can take you far. Amen? You know, so I want to thank God for all the ministers in the house. And the Most High God will continue to promote you in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for Pastor Dial and Pastor Folari, you know, for hosting us for this Zona conference. And I tell you, when I came into this sanctuary, it's so beautiful. I feel like carrying it with me to Toronto. But we know we cannot do that. Praise the Lord. And every resource that you need, the source that never runs dry will provide unto you in the name of Jesus. Only the best belongs to our God. You know, only the best belongs to our God. And we want to appreciate our Zona coordinator, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Bengambisi Adenuga. We thank God for your life, sir. We thank God for your ministry. The Most High God will continue to empower you. And he will continue to empower your wife. In the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, sir, to, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it been conceived in the mind of anyone where God is taking you to in this zone, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, once again, we want to bless your name. Thank you, most high God. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we want to quickly talk about the wonders of praise. The wonders of praise and the subtopic for it is missiles in praise. I repeat, the wonders of praise and the subtopic is missiles in praise. Our text will be taken from Exodus 15 and I'm going to read from 9 to 11. Exodus 15, 9 to 11. It says, the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my desire shall be satisfied on them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them, you blew with your wind, the sea covered them, they sank like lead in the mighty waters, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods, who is like you? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Praise the Lord. Our God is a God of wonders. And I want to tell you that there is wonders in praising the Most High God. Amen? You know, he is full of surprises. And the more time you spend with God, the more you realize that there is a lot to learn about him. There is a lot to know about God. The more time you spend in his presence, communicating with him, there is more to know about him. And it's my prayer that he would divinely reveal himself to you, individually and collectively in the name of Jesus. You know, the love that he has towards us is unsearchable and it's unconditional. I am in awe of this God and his love. And I thank God that since the beginning of this conference, there has been awesome praise in the house. And do you know something? That is what he desires. That is what he loves. That is practically his food. We cannot give him rice. We can't give him mashed potato. We cannot give him beef. We cannot give him lasagna. But when we give him praise, that is when 
he rises up on our behalf. Amen? It is important that we reciprocate that love to our maker. You know? The way he demonstrates that love is the way that we also need to demonstrate the love that we have for him. Because he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 21, he said, these people I have formed for myself. They shall do what? They shall declare my praise. These people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. The reason why you and I have been created is to declare his praise. At all times. In the good times and in the bad times. Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, it is only the living that can praise him. It is only the living that can do what? That can praise him. And I want to say congratulations. Because you are part of the living. And that is why you can praise him. Amen? And I pray that we will not be replaced. In Luke 19 verse 40, if we can have that on the screen. Luke 19 verse 40. It says that if we refuse to praise him, he will raise stones. It says, and he answered and said, I tell you that if these shall hold their peace, the stones will cry out. He will raise stones. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Because we are going to serve him and worship him and praise him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. You know, this is an understanding that David had. King David. He understood and knew the importance of praising God. Not just in the good times, but in the bad times. And that is why the Bible tells us that he's a man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. In Psalm 34, verse 1, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. When we're facing challenges of life, what do we do? Do we say, oh, Jesus, oh, it is finished. Oh, there's something wrong. Or do we take time to devote our time to him and just say, Father, I leave everything in your hands. Have your way. Have your way. We are no longer slaves to fear. Because we are a child of God. Praise the Lord. And that is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to take our praise from us. When challenges come our ways, he, he does not want us to praise him. But in the midst of praising, I can tell you that is when you will receive your victory. That is when the, 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 the text that we read, the children of Israel, when they praise the Lord, that is when Pharaoh and his horsemen and every, and every one of them, the Red Sea just swallowed them up. And Moses was able to say, who is like unto this God? Glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Always doing wonders. Nothing will take the praise of God out of your mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. You know, when we first started the church, there was a sister in the church, she got pregnant after trusting God for a lo long time for the fruit of the womb. And when the day came for her to have a child, you know, something that you've been expecting, something you've been looking forward to, she gave birth to a stillborn. The child had died. Of course, this is a very devastating situation. And I remember as a church, after service that day, we all went, you know, to visit her. And immediately, we entered her apartment. Immediately, we entered her apartment. She started praising God. I mean, songs of praise. This is somebody who just went through a traumatic experience. Losing a child, a child that she had carried for nine months, a child that had kicked in her, 
a child that she felt and was praying for. But on the day of delivery, the enemy struck. But when we entered her apartment, she started praising God. I was shocked. And I was moved. And everybody joined in. Because it encouraged us. We were there to commiserate with her. But we ended up praising God for his goodness. I can tell you that no matter any situation that happens, there is always good in it. There is always good in it. Because why? When that baby died, the enemy could have taken her life. But I want to tell you today, she has four children. The enemy stole one, but God gave her four. And that is how our God works, in wondrous ways. Praise the Lord. Do you know that you can pray amiss? But you can never praise amiss. When you praise genuinely to the king of glory. And I'm not talking about, you know, forced praise. When we ask you, let's praise the Lord, and you're like, hallelujah. No. When the praise genuinely comes from your heart, that you want to give him glory. You know, James 4, 3, it says, you ask and you do not receive. Because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. There's a story of a young boy that I read. He's four years old. His mother punished him. And I want to believe that, you know, he misbehaved for b being punished. And his mother told him to go and sit down on a chair in the corner. He sat down on the chair in the corner. But he told his mom, he said, Mommy, I'm sitting down on the chair, but I'm actually standing up. He was physically sitting down on the chair. But within him, he was standing up. His mother didn't know this until he voiced it out. But do you know there's somebody that knows each and every one of our hearts as we are seated here? He knows whether when he asks us to sit down, whether we are standing up. He knows when he asks us to stand up, whether we are sitting down. He knows whether he asks us to praise him, whether we are grudging, or we are just grumbling or complaining. The God that knows our hearts, he is the one that is worthy to be praised. But most times as human beings, we praise and we worship men. But let men have limitations, even in what they can do. Their capacity is limited. But we serve a God that is limitless. The God that has great capacity to do and undo as he pleases. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. You know, a man called Ol Halsby, I believe his name, his last name is H-A-L-L-E-S-B-Y. He said Jesus is moved to happiness every time he sees that you appreciate what he has done for you. Jesus is moved to happiness every time he sees that you appreciate what he has done for you. And the only way we can express that appreciation really is through praise. I'm not taking out the power of prayer or the time of prayer. But what I'm encouraging us is that there are times that you just do not feel like praying. But you can praise. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for Christian music on YouTube. Even if your mouth is weak to praise. By the time you turn on those glorious songs, you will be forced to open your mouth to praise him. Your mouth will not be shut in the name of Jesus. Missiles in praise. When we talk about the word missiles, in Latin, it means mitrel, mitel, 
That means to send. And when you are praising God, you are sending praises to him and he's sending things back to you. He's sending you blessings. He's sending you power. He's sending you provision. He's protecting you. That is exactly what happened with the children of Israel. When they looked back, they saw the Pharaoh and his horsemen coming after them. What can we do now? But when, when God receives our praise, our genuine praise, that is when he arises on our behalf. And he strikes every enemy. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And as Christians, that is the weapon that we can use. But we try to fight these battles with our physical mind, our physical body. We won't win. We can't win. We have to do it in the place of prayer, in the place of praise, in the place of worship. You know, the, 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 the way God works is not our ways. You know? He can decide that, you know, this is how I want this place to look like. And you might have a different image in your mind. But I can tell you that his way is the best way. His way is the best way. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. He works in a unique way, in a, in a way that you and I cannot fathom. Psalm 22, verse 3 says, But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Brethren, I want to encourage us this morning, at every point in our lives, let us ensure that we are praising him. No matter the circumstances, no matter the situation. Praise does wonders. When it's genuine, when it's forthright, it moves mountains. You know, a quote that I got from the internet. He says, when you enter his presence with praise, he enters your circumstances with power. When you enter his presence with praise. He enters each and every circumstance with power. Quickly, we want to talk about potent missiles in praise. And the number one is, is that praise is a, a barrier breaker. It breaks every barrier. Anything that is standing as a barrier to your destiny it is crumbling today in the name of Jesus. As because we are going to praise him later on, as you praise him genuinely, every barrier, every wall is coming down in the name of Jesus. Joshua 6:16 6, says, "And the seventh time it happened when the priest blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, "Shout, for the Lord has given you the city." And verse 20 says, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down. The people went, the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. We're talking about the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho. You know, in our children's department, the children will always sing, the wall of Jericho fell down flat. The wall, children, you know that, right? Fell down flat. The children of God are praising the Lord. The wall of Jericho fell down flat. Everything that represents the wall of Jericho in your life is falling down flat in the name of Jesus. 
Praise is a barrier breaker. It makes things fall down. Things that are not supposed to be. Things that are there that are standing as a hindrance to you entering your glorious destiny. The praise of the Most High God will bring it down in Jesus' name. Number two, it's an enemy crusher. It's an enemy crusher. I want us to read 2 Chronicles 20, 22 to 24. It says, now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Amnon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. <laughs> so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude, and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. It doesn't matter the multitude of people that are against you. When you decide to praise the Most High God, he will arise on your behalf and he will defeat the multitude. Imagine one king, King Jehoshaphat, against a multitude of kings and, his, and their armies that wanted to come and destroy them. We can imagine the fear that gripped him. We can imagine the torment that he must have felt. But thank God that we have somebody that we can run to at all times. The Bible says his name is a strong tower. The righteous shall run into it and they what? They are saved. But many at times we want to battle this, the, 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 the battle ourselves. But verse 15 of that Second Chronicles 20, you know, there's a prophet that ministered to Jehoshaphat, Jehaziel. He said, and he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. For says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. It's God's. So I want to tell you henceforth, every battle, they are not yours. Don't major on any minor. Because they are his. So we give it to him to do it. We give it to him to win on our behalf. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Number two. Praise can be a depression remover. A depression remover. You know, many people have encountered, I'm a mental health nurse. You know, and I see people when they are depressed. Brethren, it's not something to write home about. It's a condition whereby people do not have control over their emotions. They don't know why they are sad. They just don't have any explanation. All they know is that they are sad. All they know is that they are sad. But there's a way praise can uplift that spirit. Because it's a demonic spirit. Depression. It's a demonic spirit. Psalm 42 verse 5, it says, Why are you cast down? Oh, my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. There is power in praise. There is power in lifting his name up in praise. When you are sad, 
engage yourself in praise. Engage yourself in praise. You know, when I was pregnant with my twin daughters, I experienced great health challenges. It was unbelievable. Having children in your 20s is very different from having children in your 30s. And I'm not in my 30s right now, you know. Praise the Lord. And to not have children in your 40s is even another challenge. But we thank God because his grace is available. But I was very, very ill. And you know, to the doctors in the house, they will say that it's a high-risk pregnancy. That's what they call it. You know, at seven weeks, I had to be taken off work to be on bed rest. I had to see a respirologist, a cardiologist, all the gist, gist, gist. I had to see them because I was, my body was not comfortable. But I remember one day after seeing the cardiologist, I sat in my car. And I turned on the CD player. The song that came on was The Voice of Truth Tells Me a Different Story. The Voice of Truth says, do not be afraid. Among all the voices crying out to me, I would choose and believe the voice of truth. Casting crowns are the group that sang that song. Oh, my God. A fire burned in me. In fact, I felt those babies kick in me because I stopped weeping. I said, I am going to deliver these children safely. I will not die. And these children will not die. Because God had promised me, even before I knew I was carrying multitudes, he told me in my bedroom, he said, I'm blessing your family with twins. All I knew then was that I was pregnant. And then I wasn't even happy that I was pregnant. Because I already had three. I was okay with the three. But God who knows the best for us. Amen. He knows the best for us. He knew that your family, he knew my family was not complete. You know, as a sister in my church said, she said to me, she said, Mommy, if you did not have those twins, you would have st stomach ache all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. But God, he just brought that song alive to me. And I tell you, everything changed. I just started praising him. Everything started going smoothly. And today, those girls are nine years old. They are nine years old. They came out alive, and I'm alive. Brethren, there's power in praise. I was depressed, and God uprooted every spirit of depression from me. And he turned my morning into dancing. Praise the Lord. He's a wealth creator. Praise creates wealth. When we give him genuine praise, he creates wealth in it. In Psalm 66, verse 1 to 2, it says, Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. And by the special grace of God, in the next few minutes, that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to make his praise glorious. We are going to do what? Make his praise glorious. Second Chronicles 20, 25 to 26. He says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoil, they found much among them, including equipment, garments, and valuable things which they took for themselves, more than they could carry away, so much that they spent three days 
gathering the spoil. Those are things that the children of Israel did not work for. But God decided to favor them. The wealth of the Gentiles is ours. That is what the Bible says. So is anybody ready to join me in praise this morning? Are you ready to join me in praising the Most High God? I believe the choir should be standing here by now. Where are they? Praise the Lord. We are going to start with this worship song that we sang earlier. Because he is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. Shall we rise? You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. Yes, Lord. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. So Tori Amao, you are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. Worshipping him, trusting him, know that he is able. He is able. He is able. All the situations, all the circumstances that are troubling your mind, your heart, your home, your ministry, the most high God is.